Hello everyone, Brian from Witch Doctor here. Um, interesting test uh, this time around with uh, neck diameter. Um, certainly neck diameter or what they call neck tension, what's commonly referred to as is neck tension, uh, is a factor in precision. Um, sometimes you want a little neck tension, sometimes you want a lot. A little is usually about, you know, sizing the brass about a thousandths. Um, tighter than the actual bullet diameter. Lots of neck tension is sizing that about three to four thousandths uh, tighter than the actual bullet diameter. Um, and so that we know has an effect on precision. I believe we posted some tests here a while ago on that. Um, and what I was thinking though is how much of the <laughs> neck should be sized. Uh, there's a couple of schools of thoughts on, on that. Um, one is sizing roughly 50% of the neck, and usually that's done with bullets that don't don't really seat much below that 50%. Um, and then another school is size about 80% of the neck. Um, both schools of thought um, usually are for bullets that, yeah, just don't really go that deep into the neck in terms of seating. Um, the idea behind partially sizing your neck is that uh, leaving this sort of bottom portion, whether it's 20% of the bottom or 50% of the bottom, um, will help with sort of centering the brass uh, when the bullet is chambered. Um, it'll also help with making sure that there's a nice tight chamber seal there so that no gases sort of spill out and cause uh, variable pressure. So anyway, just thought I'd go ahead and test, test it out and compare 80% uh, versus 50%. Okay, so how I did that test is I took this Micron die. This Micron die is actually specifically developed to uh, size the neck at 80%. <laughs> Coincidentally, they sell a die here that will size a 6 PPC case 80% so that when you throw your bushing in and you crank it down all the way, um, there's about 80% of the neck that will be sized with this die. You can hear that little sound, clicking sound there. That is the bushing is a little bit loose in there, and they do that so that um, the bushing will uh, be able to sort of center itself once you stick the, the piece of brass um, into the die. Um, they don't want to push the bushing in any particular direction. They want it to kind of free float in there and then allow it to sort of center itself once the brass is pushed up into the uh, neck area there neck sizing area. So what I did was I took a bunch of cases, sized them with this, with this cranked all the way down, and then I um, went back on the sizing die quite a bit, sized a brass piece, took a look at the neck. I can usually tell how far it sizes. There's some some areas there where you can clearly see, it's probably hard to see on the video, but I can clearly see it where the bushing sort of stops. And I made sure I took a, a good look, measured it with some calipers, even measured it with this micrometer to see how far down the neck am I sizing this thing. And got it to about 50%. And then I sized a bunch more brass at 50% neck sizing. And went ahead and loaded all the bullets, again, all the same, controlled for everything, same amount of powder, same bullet type, same seating, shot the groups um, on three different days, uh, but shot them, um, if it was 80% size or 50% size, uh, on the same day. Um, that way I had um, direct comparisons in the same type of atmospheric conditions. And I shot eight record targets of, of each, 80% uh, sized and 50% sized. All right, and what I found for group size is that they were very similar. Um, the groups for the 80% size overall on average were slightly smaller. The average of the eight five shot groups at 80% sized were 0.2609. At the 50% sized 
the average of eight of the five shot groups was 0.2983. So about 30 thousandths um, greater in group size if you only if you only sized 50% of the neck. Sizing 80% of the neck seemed to have led to bit smaller groups. Statistically speaking, it was not statistically significant. We would need a probability value below 0.05 to reach statistical significance, but we only got a probability value of 0.188. Um, so as you can see there, in terms of statistical difference, not there, but um, there was a what I would consider a pretty meaning, meaningful difference. Here's the targets. And so I was able to shoot um, 80, 50 across the board. I shot all these on the first day, measured velocity, standard deviation, and extreme spread. Really didn't have any difference in those values, so they weren't really meaningful um, at all. The, you get the same velocity, same uh, standard deviation, extreme, extreme spread, regardless of whether it's 50% sized or 80% sized. Um, shot these two sets of groups on the same day and then shot these two sets of groups on another day. So three days of testing, but I did shoot the 80s and the 50s all together. So yeah, that's it. In conclusion, I think you're good to go sizing it 50 or 80 um, percent. But I know just, just uh, statistically speaking, if I probably would have shot maybe five more five shot groups here and continued with this trend, it would probably have been statistically significant with the 80% neck size um, showing better performance. So I'm just going to go ahead and utilize this die the way it was designed, uh, where I size the neck uh, 80%. Now, if you don't have a die like this, you know you may have one that uh, you know you can twist up like this and then lock it into place with a locking ring, and that way you can you know adjust how much of the neck that you size. Um, and do it with you know a different type of die, but this type of die you lock it into place and it actually was designed to um, neck size 80% of the neck. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share.